Resveratrol extends lifespan, but only under two experimental conditions. So let's take a look at that data. First, resveratrol extends lifespan in a mouse model of diet-induced obesity. And that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got proportion surviving plotted against time on the x. And that time is after starting resveratrol treatment at one year of age. And these data were in male, uh, male mice. Unfortunately, female mice weren't used. And these mice were then fed one of three diets. The first diet was the standard diet, which was 7% fat, but also note that there was no real food on, the, on that diet. It included cornstarch, which is simple sugar, casein as a protein source, maltodextrin, simple sugar, sucrose, simple sugar, soybean oil, cellulose, which is a non-fermentable fiber. So there was no real food on this diet, but that was the standard diet. The second diet was the high calorie diet, and this was an obesogenic diet as it was 60% fat and it induced an increase in body weight, which is what we can see here. So body weight plotted on the y-axis against time uh, starting at 50 weeks from the beginning of the study. And for the standard diet fed mice, we can see the body weight was approximately constant at about 35 grams per mouse. However, for both high calorie fed groups, including the high calorie plus resveratrol group, which was 0.04% resveratrol or 400 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram of food, we can see that both high calorie fed mice had a significant increase for in body weight about by about 40% which was sustained for the duration of the study. So we can see why it's both a high calorie and an obesogenic diet. All right, so what was the impact for resveratrol on lifespan? So for that, we go to 0.5 survival, which is median survival. That's the time when half the colony has died and half is still alive. And we can see that the shortest median survival was for the high calorie fed mice, which had a median survival of about 108 weeks. In contrast, we can see that the standard diet lived significantly longer at, uh, or more mice on the standard diet were significantly still alive when compared with the high calorie group. About 30% more mice fed the standard diet were still alive at 108 weeks when, com when compared with the 50% that were still alive on the high calorie diet. But here we can see that resveratrol feeding on a high calorie obesogenic diet had uh, more of those mice were significantly uh, alive, 20% more were uh, still alive at 108 weeks when compared with the high calorie fed mice. So there we can see that resveratrol extended lifespan in a mouse model of diet induced obesity. Now these data were published in 2006 and in full lifespan data that was published in 2008, which also included data for maximal lifespan. And that's what we're gonna see here. So again, on the y-axis, we've got proportion surviving or survival plotted against age and weeks after starting resveratrol treatment. And this was again in one-year-olds uh, and these were male mice. Unfortunately, no female mice were used. And now there are, these m mice were fed one of four diets. The standard diet, which was the same as I showed before, the high calorie control, that 60% fat diet. And then we've got two different resveratrol groups, HCLR, which is high calorie, low resveratrol, which was 100 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram of food. And then HCR, which was high calorie plus 400 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram food. So uh, although we can see that dashed line, which is indicative of median survival, they reported average lifespan, which should be in the same ballpark as the median survival data. For the uh, standard, uh, standard diet, mice fed the standard diet, they had an average lifespan as indicated by the black uh, arrow of about 118 weeks. And we can also see that the high calorie fed mice, the obesogenic diet had a significantly shorter lifespan as indicated by the red arrow of 102 weeks and that leftward shift uh, when compared with the standard diet. When compared with the high calorie diet for mice that were fed low resveratrol, we can see a significant increase for median lifespan, 115 weeks versus 102 weeks. But, uh, and then similarly, uh, I was gonna say but, because some of these studies, the low resveratrol increased lifespan, but the high resveratrol didn't. But in this situation, high resveratrol or 400 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram food also extended median lifespan or average lifespan when compared with the high calorie diet, as you can see by the rightward shift for the uh, dark red line when compared with the light blue line. So from this study, we can see that there was increased median lifespan for both the low and relatively higher dose resveratrol fed groups for mice on the high calorie diet. So what about maximal lifespan? So in this study, they evaluated by looking uh, at 0.2 survival. At this point, 80% of the colony has died and only 20% is still alive. And we can see it uh, illustrated here too with this image with maximal lifespan plotted on the y-axis. So first we can see that when compared with the standard diet, 
the high calorie obesogenic diet, the black versus the light blue lines, uh, the high calorie diet had a significantly reduced maximal lifespan. And then high calorie diet fed mice plus low resveratrol, 100 milligrams uh, per kilogram food, had a significant increase in maximal lifespan for mice fed the high calorie diet and low resveratrol when compared with high calorie diet, no resveratrol. But in this situation, and although the curve is shifted to the right, which is going in the right, right, uh, right direction, sorry, the 400 uh, milligram resveratrol group per kilogram food, high calorie resveratrol, didn't have a significant increase for maximal lifespan when compared with the high calorie group that was not supplemented with lifespan. Nonetheless, from this study, we can see that resveratrol increases lifespan on this high calorie obesogenic diet. But, at, but note, as indicated now by the blue arrows, at most to the level found in mice on the standard diet that were not supplemented with resveratrol, which then raises the question, does resveratrol extend lifespan on a non-obesogenic diet? And that's what we're going to see here. So same setup, survival on the y-axis plotted against time after starting resveratrol treatment, which was initiated at one year of age. And again, this is data for male mice who were fed uh, 100 or 400 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram of food, which in this study, uh, in this survival curve, was the standard diet SD, as shown with the black line. And then we can see the two lower resveratrol groups, LR in red, and the 400 milligram resveratrol group in light green. So when looking at median survival with that dashed red line and then average survival, which was reported in the study, again, we know that the standard diet fed mice had an average lifespan of about 118 weeks. And then when compared with the low resveratrol group, we can see that the median or average survival was essentially overlapping when compared with the standard diet. So low resveratrol on a standard diet did not extend median lifespan. Now, for the higher resveratrol group, although that survival curve is shifted to the right, that 2.3 week increase for average lifespan was not significantly different for the standard diet fed mice that were not supplemented with the resveratrol. From, so from these data, we can see that median survival was not increased in mice fed low or relatively higher resveratrol on a standard diet. So what about maximal survival? So for that, in the study, they looked at 0.2 survival. Again, 80% of the colony has died, 20% is still alive. And here we can see virtually overlapping curves when compared with the standard diet. Both the low and higher dose resveratrol groups uh, have a similar average, uh, sorry, maximal lifespan when compared with the standard diet. So here too, there was no effect. But maybe the resveratrol dose, 100 and 400 milligrams per kilogram food, maybe that dose wasn't high enough to affect lifespan on a standard diet. So that was evaluate, evaluated then in this study, where again, starting in one-year-olds, male mice were fed now a much higher dose of resveratrol, 2,400 milligrams per kilogram of food of the standard diet. So it's SD, standard diet, HR, higher resveratrol. And we can see that with the green line when compared with the black line, which was the standard diet fed mice. So when compared with the standard diet fed mice, the black line, we can see that the very high dose of resveratrol has a survival, a median survival that virtually overlaps. So no significant difference there for median survival for the highest dose of resveratrol on a standard diet. Well, what about maximal survival? So again, 0.2 survival, 80% of the colony has died, 20% still alive. And there too, we can see virtually overlapping curves for high dose resveratrol on a standard diet when compared with standard diet fed mice that were not fed resveratrol. So from this plot, we can see that for mice on the standard diet, but with high resveratrol, 2,400 milligrams per kilogram food, there was no effect on median or maximal survival. So just to re reiterate, three different doses of resveratrol, 100, 400, and 24 milligrams per kil kilogram food, did not extend lifespan and mice fed a standard non-obesogenic diet. Now these data were verified by a different research group in a separate study, which is what we can see here. So on the y-axis, we've got survival, and then on the left, we've got data for males, and then finally, we've got data for female mice that were also supplemented with resveratrol. Now, this is data from the Interventions Testing Program, which is the gold standard for longevity studies. Uh, as the studies are performed, the survival studies are performed at three different universities, University of Texas, UT, University of Michigan, UM, and at the Jackson Lab. And then those data from those three studies are pooled into one study, which is what you can see here with the data for, again, male mice on the left and females on the right. Just like the earlier studies, resveratrol treatment was started at one year of age. And then we have three different dietary groups, the controls in blue, 
And note that in this case, the control diet was different from the standard diet that was shown earlier, as this was whole food based, as opposed to the standard diet earlier, which was a purified diet with no real food. And then we've got two different resveratrol groups, 300 parts per million, which is 300 milligrams per kilogram. And then similarly, 1200 milligrams of resveratrol per kilogram on this whole food based diet. So what was the impact of resveratrol on lifespan in these studies? So for that, we go to median survival, 0.5 survival. And you can see that first that the curves for the blue and the red line, control versus low dose resveratrol, essentially overlapping. So no significant difference there. But we can see that the highest resveratrol group, 1200 milligrams per kilogram food, has a small rightward shift, which is going in the right direction. But that data was not significantly different when compared with standard diet fed mice that were not supplemented with high dose resveratrol. Uh, similar data was in females too. You can see that the survival curves for low and high resveratrol are essentially completely overlapped with the standard diet, which statistically was not, they were, these groups were not significantly different in terms of median lifespan. So resveratrol treatment for mice on a standard diet for female and male mice, so far, no significant difference. For maximal lifespan, in this study, they used 10% survival. So 90% of the colony had died, 10% was still alive. And we see a similar, similar effect or lack of an effect. Well, compared with the standard diet, you can see that the red survival curve is essentially completely overlapped with the blue line. So low dose resveratrol didn't impact maximal survival in the male mice. And then again, although the highest resveratrol dose is shifted a little bit in the right direction, going in the right direction in terms of longevity, that too was not significantly different when compared with the lifespan, maximal lifespan for mice fed the standard diet without resveratrol. With similar data in the female mice too, no effect for maximal lifespan for either of the two resveratrol fed groups on the standard diet. So from these two studies, we can see that five different doses of resveratrol, 100, 300, 400, 1200, and 2400 milligrams per kilogram on a non-obesogenic diet, on a standard diet, whether it was purified or whole food based, did not extend lifespan in both male and female mice. Now on the opening slide, I mentioned that there was another condition where resveratrol extended lifespan. So what was that situation? And that was for mice that were fed every other day, EOD, and the diet in this case was the standard diet, that 7% fat diet that was purified that didn't contain any real food. So on day one, mice were allowed free access to eat as much as they wanted. And on day two, the food was removed and uh, resveratrol was uh, supplemented to the every other day fed mice. So there were two resveratrol groups for the every other day feeding, 100 milligrams per kilogram and 400 milligrams per kilogram for resveratrol per kilogram food. All right, so survival, that's what we can see here. Same setup as the earlier data. Survival on the y-axis plotted against age and weeks on the x with the resveratrol treatment starting at one year old. And again, this is only male mice, but this was they were fed every other day with those two different resveratrol doses. So what was the effect on lifespan? So for that, we take a look at the average lifespan data. We know our standard diet controls lived about 118 weeks. Every other day feeding had a small shift to the right, which was not significantly different from the standard diet fed mice, although it is going in the right direction. And then in terms of resveratrol treatment, there was a significant increase in lifespan for mice that were fed every other day, plus 100 milligrams per kilogram resveratrol, were compared with every other day feeding without resveratrol. But that was true only for the low resveratrol treatment group. As we can see that the pink and the orange lines, the survival curves for average survival are completely overlapped. So only low resveratrol for mice fed, in every, mice fed every other day had a significant increase in um, median or average survival. So what about uh, maximal survival? And there we see a similar story. Uh, when compared with the standard diet, every other day feeding didn't impact maximum, maximum survival. But we can see that the blue line, which is the low dose resveratrol group, had a significantly increased maximum survival when compared with every other day feeding without resveratrol. And then once again, the high dose resveratrol group or higher dose didn't increase lifespan for every other day feeding that were not supplemented with resveratrol. So from these data, we can see that resveratrol, again, increases lifespan in mice that were fed every other day, but only at the lowest resveratrol dose, 100 milligrams per kilogram food. So if you remember the opening slide, I said that resveratrol extends lifespan, but only under two, experiment, two experimental conditions. And just to summarize, those conditions were on a high fat obesogenic diet, but note that the lifespan increases there were not longer than mice that were fed the standard diet. So no mice on the resveratrol treatment groups live longer than the standard diet mice in terms of average and maximal lifespan. 
Under the, the other condition, it was when mice were fed every other day, plus resveratrol, but only at the lowest resveratrol dose, 100 milligrams per kilogram of food. And then resveratrol did not extend lifespan with five different doses of resveratrol for mice that were fed a standard, both purified and whole food based, non-obesogenic diet. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NED quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, and note that their panel of 17 biomarkers is mostly different from the at-home metabolomics, so they are complementary measures, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other links and links to the papers referenced in this video will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.